Now this shape is based on the torus knot, well pretty clearly, and uh, if you right click instead of just selecting the default torus knot you need to select this little control on the right and then this resolution control which has a slider allows you to reduce resolution so that's the minimum resolution you're allowed on this go OK and then select the entire object and switch to the edge tool and go to select and store that selection then go to the face tool right click and inset those faces and then right click again and collapse at this point you go to the edge tool and go to select and recall the selection and hit delete so you're left with this effect now you want the edge tool still selected and you want to select one two three edges and they want to be so that they're going to run in parallel and then press L the loop command to loop it all around the shape and at this point you can right click and loop cut it into three separate shapes press space to deselect everything and using the geometry graph hide two of those shapes now there's a somewhat broken surface here so get the surface tool and select that broken surface and go to the underside and select the corresponding underside surface and then hide that shape and reveal the next one and do the same thing for that so it's the top surface and the bottom surface hide and reveal the final shape and it's the bottom surface and the top surface when you've got all three selected like that unhide all three shapes right click and intrude now if you hit the tab key you can intrude zero which is what you're aiming for and go OK at this point go to select and inverse and then right click and extrude normal and hold down the control key and extrude 0.2 and at this point now select the entire object and press S for smooth, S for smooth and S for smooth again if you want to keep smoothing so it gives you a nice fairly smooth shape and that's the end of your shape and that only took two minutes so there you go if you want to further process this for example if you're going to render it in octane then you might want to do something like separate these out into separate materials to do that's quite easy select the entire object select one of these objects go to the face tool right click and then right click again on the material give it a name and assign it a color okay and then press space to deselect select entire object select one of the new objects you want to go to face tool right click right click again give it a name and assign it well a different color would be helpful okay okay press space to deselect select entire object select the final remaining one go to the face tool right click right click on material give it a name okay and assign it a yet another color and at this point you can export this shape which depending on its complexity may take a little while so go file save and export and then just give it a name object okay so once that's exported you could for example use uh, UV mapper classic which looks like this and you just have to wait for wings to export the shape or I could pause the video at this point if it's going to take a while it uh, would normally provide a progress bar here but because of Camtasia Studio I think it interferes slightly with it so okay it's exported so in UV mapper classic you go file and load model then navigate to where the model is and load that in see there's a little progress there that tells you it's loaded then go OK and uh, it tells you that there's no UV map yet so if you go edit new UV map and I'll use spherical uh, Y axis that seems appropriate it's more or less going through the middle of the shape scale the results OK and then you can go file and then save model go OK I don't know what those options really mean and then just I'm going to overwrite it so you say yes to overwrite it and that provides this um, object with a handy little UV map as well so it allows you to put textures on it in uh, Octane I think Dust Studio to some extent relies on there being a UV map to uh, put textures on uh, Bryce being a little bit more friendly in this manner has some useful mapping modes that allows you to do that without providing a UV map so there you go that's the end of the video I hope you found that interesting useful and you'll have a go at rendering this shape in the render engine of your choice Cheers now.